So let's put the loom here. Yes, let's get rid of the studio. We don't need a dining room. We can just stand <laughs> at the counter in the kitchen. <laughs> and we each get a counter. There we go. What do you think? Yeah. So this would be the warp beam and this would be the bench over here. It'll be less intrusive to where the family gets to sit and right, watch things. Kind of scoot, the living room scoot the family that way. Got it. Get out of my way. I have fiber. Okay. And maybe we'll relocate the plants to the other window. Or to the bedroom of one of our children. They'll die. <laughs> Just this tent alone. Oh, you're here. I love you, son. <laughs> It'll be in his room. Okay. We're going to put her here, so yeah. let's go get her. Let's go get her. Let's do it. Yes. The basic idea of a floor loom has existed since at least 4,400 BC. A piece of pottery was discovered in Egypt showing a picture of a horizontal loom using treadles. Floor looms have changed in style over the millennia and across cultures, but the same basic principles still apply to the weaving itself. Weaving is an ancient craft. This is why you'll see disassembled looms discovered and thrown in the trash by non-weavers who think it's just a pile of sticks and have no idea what it is. And sometimes if they can't identify it as a loom, they'll say, I think it has all the pieces. But just like old spinning wheels, never buy a loom in pieces. Make sure you can put it together and that all the parts work if you're going to get a large loom like this because one missing piece can just be absolute catastrophe unless you really, really, really know what you're doing. But as a beginner, I would not recommend this situation. Mark, I found a loom. Really? Where is it? It's like an hour and a half from here in the hills of nowhere. Really? Yeah, can we go? Okay. <laughs> How much was this loom, though? It was 300 then. It was $300. This is what $300 in lumber looks like. I've got to get the frame built first. Right. So... Where is the frame? Like, If memory serves me correctly, this... This is the whole frame. Oh, and let's show people what you did when we took it apart. That was brilliant so that we can put it back together. Oh, so all the pieces are lettered. So A connects to A. Well, that's U, but yeah. U connects to U. Here's the trick with these is you have to figure out where one piece goes and then everything else And then you can... build off of that piece. Right, and I'm gonna start off the very back because I know where those go because they hold the warp beam. This? Yeah, no, the warp beam with the bracket, yep. So, so I'll hand you that. And then this is goes this way because that's held in place by gravity. Got it. So what we're looking for okay, next. So then this is the other side. Some of the stuff should not come back to me. Carriage bolt. That looks pretty good. Uh, cool. And then that goes there. Yeah, and these holes are so you can pull it out and you can move the bench to one side or the other. What do you think about this situation? Floor looms come in many sizes, and this loom that I named Bertha has a 60 inch or about one and a half meter weaving width. I bought Bertha when I lived in Wyoming, and I used her to weave rugs, blankets, table runners, scarves, and wall hangings. But she hasn't been set up since we moved back to Illinois, and I'm interested to see how her maple wood and sisal rope warp break has responded to the increase in humidity. So this is the jack portion of the jack loom, and these are the arms that, the arms and levers that lift the um, shafts up and down. But there's not one marking anywhere on this. So we're figuring that this was um, a small loom company made this, and they use the they use the frame from a loom. That would have been more similar to a 
uh, counterbalance loom, which would typically have an overhead swing beater and um, all of the counterbalance stuff would be up above. Most jack looms have all of this stuff down below so that when you press the treadle, the jacks are activated and they push the warp up. This one pulls the warp up. The, the components look like they were made by somebody who knew what they were doing. So maybe if anyone watching this has any information about this loom, this style of jack loom with an overhead swing beater, and all of these oddities, please let me know in the comments because I would love to learn more about the history of this loom if possible. I do know that this loom is not antique because jack looms were invented in the 1930s and the patent for the jack loom was registered uh, by Everett Gilmore in, I think it was 1932. These probably got mixed up. We might have to rearrange these. Um, Those are all about even. But then over here, this one is just sticking way up. And that me that's a problem because that means that the eyes for the heddles on this shaft are gonna be slightly raised, which is gonna lift part of the warp. So when I'm sending the shuttle through, it's gonna catch because a couple of those warps are gonna be sticking up. We can't figure out if it's always been this way and I just dealt with it before, or if they line up better if they're hung in a different order. So okay. we're going to rearrange them. So go ahead and um, pull those off. Less worse. All, all, even. all even. Okay. Yeah, that's way better. So they go in the slot. Yep. Is it moving freely or not? No, this one isn't. If it doesn't slide, then we have to go and start shaving wood down. Start from the back. Oh, I know what we need to do differently here. Put it down. Oh, do we need to... They're sticky. We need to put the top cross pieces on so that no, it's squared up. The... Yeah, let's do the rest of them. This has to go here. Like, that's the pivot point. Right. So, instead of trying to feed that all the way around the brake lever. Right. Feed the rope bend around. Right. It is such a beefy brake to go on here. Like, this, this whole loom is so beefy. But then it's a jack loom. It's just confusing. There okay, it is. So go ahead and try to push down on it. How much give there is for it? It requires a lot. So when this, when this, when she act, when she engages the brake, then she'll ratchet on this side, and when to to tighten the whole piece, it moves this, the whole this thing. This brake has to. Oh, I remember. Yeah, I so remember how that works. There's quite a bit of so you want it crazy tight. When this thing's in use, it'll stretch out. But once you start weaving, we might have to do some tightening. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. That ratchet lever pivots off of the beam. It has to be oh. on there with this. Do we, seriously, do we have to take the entire side off of the loom to get this piece on there? Because you can't just, we have to take the whole side off the loom to put that in. 
Everyone's tired. Even the dog's tired. Dog doesn't do anything. She just holds the floor in place. She's tired. I'm tired. We'll get it tomorrow. It's okay. Good morning, friends. I hope you all enjoy your new window. I'm trying to summon fall by drinking cinnamon apple spice tea. We did as much as we could last night, but we were tired, so we went to bed. <laughs> There's more to do uh, because she's not finished yet. So what do we still have to do, Mark? It's the handle for the ratchet on the... Uh, cloth beam. The handle for the ratchet. On the cloth beam. The handle to ratchet the cloth beam. There you go. Okay. I have a plan. So I'm gonna pull this off, I'm gonna pull this out, I'm gonna pull this out, I'm gonna shove it in there, and then we're gonna put it back together. Got it? Ooh, she's off. Is this the right way? Okay, there we go. And now, slide it out. She's all happy in there now. I know. Remember, this goes down, and this goes down. There it is. When a piano is totally tuned up properly, it's under like 3,000 pounds of pressure. A piano's under 3,000 pounds of pressure? When it's totally tuned. I believe that. Strength. I wonder how much this would be under when you were doing like that, that uh, red rug. Yeah, that red rug, that rug had a lot of tension on it. It was cranked. With Bertha all back together and set up, it's time to test out all her moving parts to see if everything is working smoothly. Success. Welcome home, Bertha. I've missed you. Thank you for all your help. You're welcome. I really appreciate it. I mean, this wouldn't happen without you. And of course, a shout out to our son, Merrick, who was done after one day. He didn't make it back for day two, but he was a great help as well. I am so excited to start weaving some projects. So is this going to be a weaving channel now? No. <laughs> uh, we will have weaving videos, but this is not going to turn into a 100% weaving channel uh, for a couple reasons. For one, spinning is my absolute passion and I just really enjoy helping people be able to spin, especially right now when people can't get to a lot of in-person classes. I will definitely continue doing the spinning tutorials, but we will have some weaving content because what am I going to do with all my hand spun yarn? <laughs> I'm going to weave it. So we'll have some weaving videos, but we will still mostly be spinning. And there's no room for another loom. No, there's no room for more loops in this living room. We could get rid of the couch. <laughs> so definitely remember to subscribe to this channel if you want to see more content about looms, about spinning wheels. I will be making fabric and probably some rugs and other projects like that. Hopefully a lot of rugs. You just want rugs. You like my rugs. <laughs> Rag rugs. Yeah. I will have another video coming up shortly about the history of this loom because we were able to identify it and do a little research. But I think it is going to deserve its own video. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!